Hello everybody, it's Sword Song, and welcome back to 52 Weeks, 52 Films. This is week three, um, which will have been posted right up alongside week two, hopefully. <laughs> um, this week I watched Kubo and the Two Strings, which I watched with Sword Mom, Sword Sister, Joe, and my stepdad in, while I was visiting Colorado. And... I mean none of this to be harsh. I really enjoyed the film, it was absolutely fucking gorgeous, but I did not fall in love with it the way I thought I was going to. Watching the trailers, I was fucking hyped for this film. It looks, it looked amazing. And so when I finally got a chance to watch it, I was very excited. Um, but perhaps I waited too long because everyone was like, oh my god, Kubo, 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 it's so good, so good. And maybe I was just inundated with that and it could never live up to the hype I had heard about it. Um, but over I did enjoy it. I, I thought the ending was a little convoluted. That was a little strange. It was directed by Travis Knight as his directorial debut. He had been working at, he did like uh, head animation on Coraline and he had done stuff for the box trolls and like Paranorman. So this is a man going into stop motion animation knowing what he wants and what needs to be done to get what he wants. And you can fucking see it on screen. There are some magnificent, beautiful and grand shots in this movie. Um, there's also a lot of really great voice acting. So you have like Charlize Theron plays the monkey and you have Matthew McConaughey plays the beetle. Though, oddly enough, I thought it was Mel Gibson for a long time. Not Mel Gibson. Oddly enough, I thought it was George Clooney for a good chunk of the movie for some reason. He sounded a lot like George Clooney. Uh, specifically George Clooney from like Dusk Till Dawn. But it was Matthew McConaughey. But they did really good, all of them. Um, but yeah, it was a fucking fabulous, gorgeous movie with beautiful puppetry. Uh, the stop animation, the stop motion that they did, you can tell just took forever. I don't know, I honestly don't know how anybody in the world can make a stop motion movie in a reasonable amount of time. Like, if I ever tried, it would take me years to finish a project. Even with a whole fucking crew and budget, like, I just... Because it's like, what, it's like 24 movements of a puppet per one second frame? Like, that's ridiculous. You know, you have people spending eight hours to do, like, five seconds of frame, and, like, that's redonkulous. <laughs> but it is absolutely just thrilling to watch, uh, especially the origami scenes where Kubo's using his shamisen to animate the origami and tell this grand story of his father. So, yeah... There was a lot of very striking imagery, and the story was quite cool. Uh, you know, like, the his mom's sisters, who were like moon princesses, are trying to get Kubo's eye, because he'd already had one plucked out at birth. They're trying to get it so he can't see humanity, so he'll come and live with them. And they're all very evil, and the sisters' design, absolutely just really gorgeous, and from... Excuse me. From the moment you see the sisters, you know, oh, these are the bad guys, these are the big baddies that are going to be taking over the movie. I feel like they're underused. Like, you get a couple really cool scenes with them and like that's about it. Because they do have a very intimidating screen presence and they're only used a couple times. However, they are used more often than the uh, Moon King, who's on screen like once. I, well, twice, but one time you're not supposed to know it's him because it's like a dream sequence. And I watched it and I was like, oh, this fucking Moon King. But, kids movie, so I guess sometimes it's, you see things and make it easier to call things as you're an adult. Um, also, the, like, the final form of the Moon King, like the giant bug fucking creature, that was weird. I feel like he should have been more regal. Or, or more terrifying. Either more regal or more terrifying. Uh, and as an insectophobe saying that that thing wasn't super scary, like, I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. But I had a couple, a couple one of my biggest problems with, with Kubo and the two strings was monkey. Because 
you know, later in the movie it's revealed that Monkey is Kubo's mother. And she's like fighting to hold her form together because she's she's dead. She's going to die, she but she specifically took the form of Monkey to help Kubo survive and find the armor that he needs to fight the Moon King. And she's just so aggressive, like the whole time, right up until she's like, Oh yeah, by the way, I'm your mom. She's really aggressive and curt and mean, which isn't anything that they established Kubo's mother to be. And on one hand, yeah, I want to say that maybe it was to help hide the fact it was his mother or whatever, but she knows she's dying. She knows her time with Kubo is coming to an end. Why would she want to waste that being cruel? And so I didn't get that. I didn't like that. That didn't make sense to me. But, you know, whatever. Um, I feel like some of the... Well, not the motivations, because it's, it's a pretty basic quest movie. Like, here, you are in danger. Go find magic armor to survive danger. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but some of the relationships between the characters feel very forced. Kubo with his mother before she is monkey is, is a very caring, loving relationship. You can tell that that has been built over time. You know, he takes care of her, he feeds her, and then when she's able, she tells him these grand stories of his father. Um, but between Monkey and Kubo, it just seems very forced and combative, and I'm not sure, like, why that is the choice that had been made. Uh, and then, like, the budding relationship between Monkey and the Beetle, who turns out to be the father, Hattori, uh, that feels very awkward and out of the blue. I mean, I guess it makes sense because, like, deep down in their hearts they knew it was each their love. But from an outside perspective, it just like it went from like, oh, I fucking hate you and I hope you die on a rock to, oh, that we have this weird tender relationship now moments before they find out, you know, who is each other. Yes, English. Who is each other? That's how that works. So I thought that was very oddly handled. Um, obviously, like I said, it is this guy's directorial debut, and as a visual director, excuse me, and being able to direct the emotions of his voice actors, he did very good. Uh, a lot of the stuff I have are just niggling little annoying problems that bug me, and like I said, it's probably because it was so hyped to me that the movie was never going to live up to it, so I had like an unfair experience with it. But, like I said, I don't mean any of it to be overly critical or harsh. It's just my opinion. I feel like it was supposed to be bigger. Uh, two other things bother me is the soundtrack, like the score. I feel like there should have been a lot more shamisen in the score, simply because of the two strings thing. Um, and the fact that there's like a distinct lack of two strings in this movie. Like, he has three strings on his shamisen uh, right up until the end, which he's got like two of them break. So he has one string, and then he uses his mother's hair as a second string, and then one of his own hairs as a third string. Still has three strings, no two strings. That drove me up the wall. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, but I don't, I fucking, people try to justify it to me. And I it just, it, no. Like, it's a really cool name for a movie, but you could have called it Kubo and the Three Strings, and it would have just been fine. Or Kubo and the Magic Armor, or Kubo and his fucking monkey journey. <laughs> it would have been more apt to what the film was. The ending, I mentioned that earlier, I thought that was very strange, where Kubo gives his grandfather the Moon King, like, an eye, so he can start to see humanity, and then he's turned into a human, but he has, like, amnesia, so he doesn't remember being this evil Moon King bastard. And then everyone in the village comes up and like telling him stories about how he's a great guy. And he's like, oh, you always give candy to kids. And you always take care of your grandson Kubo. And blah, 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 blah. And it seemed very odd for the village to go from, oh my god, terrifying bug monster to like, oh yeah, you're a human now and we're going to fucking brainwash you to think you're a good guy. So I thought the ending was very jarring. Uh, I also don't feel like they ever really dealt with Kubo's loss of both of his parents right after having discovered he still had them, but that would have been a very heavy and emotional scene for a kid's movie, so 
you know, you win some, you lose some. As a viewer of a film you had nothing to do making with. Uh, so, <laughs> I think that's, that's a big thing with the 52 Weeks, 52 Films project. You have to remember, it's like, I didn't make these movies. I have a, a base understanding of how movie making works and how storytelling works and like what I enjoy in movies. So when I talk shit about movies that everybody else loved or whatever, this is what it comes down to. I fucking really have no technical knowledge of how movies work. I have some technical knowledge of how movies work. I don't, if you just threw me into a studio I would really have no clue what I was doing. So. Any movie I would make would probably be kind of meh, anyways. So, yeah, like I said, it's, it's opinion. And, and that's my preface. No. Fuck you, phone. Fuck you nine times right in your little phone butt. You son of a bitch going off while I'm talking. But really what I'm saying is that, like, everything I'm going to say during any of these videos is opinion. It's my opinion. If you agree with my opinion, cool. If you don't, also cool. Uh, don't be angry about it, because it's a fucking movie, and how does that affect you? My feelings of a movie. How does that affect you? I'm on a tangent, but I feel like I've gotten out a lot of my thoughts about Kubo that I wanted to get out. Uh, well, that's week three of 52 films, 52 weeks, or whatever I'm calling this. 52 weeks, 52 films. Uh, please remember to do all that fun YouTube stuff, like like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye!